In this lesson, we want to review factoring out the greatest common factor, which is abbreviated as the GCF. So before we kind of jump in and start looking at some sample problems where we're factoring the greatest common factor out from a polynomial, we want to first think about what is the greatest common factor for a group of monomial terms. So most of you would have learned this in either pre-algebra or kind of your first algebra class that could be algebra one or just a general algebra course. And essentially it's a very easy procedure, just something you might've forgotten. To find the GCF for a group of monomial terms, you wanna first think about the number parts and then you can think about the variable parts. The variable part is very, very easy. The number part takes a little bit of work because you have to factor some things. So if I look at 14X squared Y, 35XY and 56X cubed Y to the ninth, and we ask, what is the GCF? I'd start by factoring each number. So 14 is two times seven. 35 is five times seven. And 56 is eight times seven. And eight is really two cubed. So I can write this as two cubed times seven, or you could write out two times two times two if you wanted to be technical. And all I'm looking for here, when I'm looking for the greatest common factor, go through the prime factorizations and find what's common to everything, okay? So don't get confused with the least common multiple. When you're looking for the GCF, it's gotta be common to everything. So I have a seven that's common to everything. So that's what's gonna be the greatest common factor, at least for the number parts, right? If I had 14, 35, and 56, and I said, what's the greatest common factor? It would be seven. Once we got our number part worked out, we think about the variable parts. Two questions you ask yourself. Number one, is the variable present in each term? Here I have x, x, and x. Forget about the exponent for a minute. Here I have y, y, and y. So I know I can put an x here and a y here. Now, what will the exponent be on each? Well, it's gonna be the smallest exponent that appears on any of the copies. So in other words, if I look at x, I have x squared, I have x to the first power, and I have x cubed. What's the smallest? It's right here, right? It's x to the first power. So this guy can stay as just x, or you can write an x to the first power for emphasis if you want. Then in terms of y, I have y to the first power, I have y to the first power, and I have y to the ninth power. Again, either of these is gonna be the winner in terms of what's the smallest. So you can put a y to the first power there. Now, why does that work? Well, if you think about it, the smallest exponent is the least number of occurrences on that variable. So if I was to write this out like I do with the numbers, x squared is what? It's x times x. x to the first power is just x. And x cubed is x times x times x. So what's common to everything? This has an x, this has an x, and this has an x. That's common to everything. You can't put a second x in there because that's not common to everything. This one doesn't have it, okay? It's gotta be common to everything. So that's why you go with the smallest exponent that appears on any of the copies. Again, two questions to ask yourself. Is the variable present in each of the terms? And what is the smallest exponent on the variable? If I was to look at a different problem, and we'll see an example in a second, but let's just say we change this problem. And this guy did not have a Y. Let's just mark it out. So this is gone now. If that's the case, then Y would get removed from the GCF because it's not present in each one. This guy has a Y, this has a Y, but this one doesn't. So it's not common to everything, so it doesn't go in, okay? But that's not the situation we have, so let's change this back to what it is. So our GCF here for these three terms is gonna be 7XY. All right, let's look at another example. So we have 8X to the sixth power Y cubed Z, 20X squared Z to the fourth, and 36X cubed Y to the fifth Z squared. So what is the GCF, or again, the greatest common factor? So for the numbers, I'm gonna factor each one. So eight factors into two cubed, two cubed or two times two times two. 20 factors into what? We know it's four times five, four is two times two. And 36 we know is nine times four. So let's write four is two times two and then nine is three times three. Okay, what's common to everything? I've got one, two, I've got another two. That's common to everything. Then I've got a third two here, not common to anything else. I've got a five, not common to anything else. And I've got two threes here that are not common to anything else. Now, since the two copies of two, in other words, four, is common to everything, 
that's going to be the GCF, at least for the numbers, right? For 8, 20, and 36. Now, in terms of the variable part, is the variable present in each term? And what's the smallest exponent on that variable? You have an x, an x, and an x. You have a y, no y. So y is not going in. You have a z, a z, and a z. So z is going to go in. Now, what's the exponent on x and what's the exponent on z? So this guy is a 6, this guy is a 2, and this guy is a 3. So the smallest exponent is a 2, so this is going to be squared. For z, I have z to the first power, z to the fourth power, and z squared. So this guy is going to be the smallest, so we just leave it as z, or you can put z to the first power for emphasis if you want. So the greatest common factor here is 4x squared z to the first power, or just z. So now that we've reviewed how to find the greatest common factor for a group of monomials, we want to think about how to factor out the GCF. So when I look at something like 6 times the quantity 4 plus 3, this is a very simple example. I just want to show you the distributive property. 6 multiplied by 4 would give me 24. So let's just write this as 6 times 4 for right now. Then plus 6 multiplied by 3 would give me 18. Now, because of the equality here, I know that I could go in reverse, right? I could pull the six back out from each term and set it out in front of some parentheses, and I'd have what is left here, which is four plus three. This property, the distributive property, allows us to write a product as a sum, and it also allows us to write a sum as a product. Now, this might seem like a really easy example because we only have numbers involved, but let's suppose we looked at something like this. 3x plus 12. How could I write this sum, right? You have 3x added to 12 as a product. So some number multiplied by some quantity. Well, essentially what I want to do is first find the GCF. So what's the GCF for 3x and 12? Well, that's really, really easy because 3 doesn't factor. And 12 I could write as 2 times 2 times 3 or 4 times 3. So I could just write this as 3 times x like this plus 3 times 4 like this, and I can pull the 3 out because that's common. So I can write that out in front of some parentheses. So just pull this guy out. And what's left inside? I would just have the x plus the 4. Okay, Very, very easy procedure. In most cases, you're not going to take the time to kind of write things out like this. To speed up the process, what I would do, I would take 3x plus 12, I would find my GCF. I know the GCF is 3. So I would just start by writing a 3 outside of a set of parentheses. And since I'm multiplying each term here by 3 to get back to this, remember, multiplication and division are opposites, so I can just take each original term and divide it by 3 to get what I'm missing. right? So in other words, if I take 3x and divide it by 3, I get x. That should make sense to you because going backwards, 3 times x gets me back to 3x. If I want this space right here, divide 12 by 3, I get 4. Again, that should make sense because 3 times 4 gives me 12. So this is the quicker way to do this. Write your GCF outside of the parentheses, divide each original term by the GCF, by what you're pulling out, and that's going to give you each spot. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have 6x cubed minus 12x squared plus 144x. So what is the greatest common factor here? So this one's a little bit more challenging. So let's think about 6x cubed. Let's think about, forget about the sign there, 12x squared, and let's think about 144x. So I know x is common to everything, and the smallest exponent is a 1. So the GCF, let's just put an x over here. For the number part, I have 6, which is 2 times 3. I have 12, which is what? It's 4 times 3, or 2 times 2 times 3. And I have 144, which most of you know is 12 squared, right? It's 12 times 12, or 2 times 2 times 3, times 2 times 2 times 3. So what's common to everything? It's going to be 6, right? 2 times 3, 2 times 3, 2 times 3. So the GCF here will be 6x. So what I want to do now, let me erase everything. I want to write my GCF, which is 6x, outside of some parentheses. And then I want to divide each term by 6x to get the terms that are missing in here. So I've got this one, I've got a minus, I've got a term here, and plus, I've got a term here. 
So 6x cubed divided by 6x would be x squared. If you have 12x squared divided by 6x, 12 divided by 6 is 2. x squared divided by x is x. And I've already accounted for the minus sign. I already put it there. Okay, so you don't need to worry about that. Then 144x divided by 6x. What is 144 divided by 6? Well, that's going to give me 24. So we factored out the greatest common factor here, and we end up with 6x times the quantity x squared minus 2x plus 24. All right, let's look at another one. So suppose we had 20xy squared minus 15x squared y minus 100xy. So again, I'm looking at 20, 15, and 100. Forget about the signs. What's the GCF? Well, to do this quickly, 20 I know is 5 times 2 times 2, but just write 5 times 4. 15 is 5 times 3. So I know at this point I can get rid of this 4, and I can get rid of this 3. Really all I'm looking for is a 5 here, and I know 100 divisible by 5. So the GCF is going to be 5, right? Because the 2 wouldn't have been common to everything, so you get rid of that. And the 3 wouldn't have been common to everything, so you can get rid of that. So it's irrelevant what the factors of this are, other than the fact that it's divisible by 5 or it has 5 as a factor. So the GCF is a 5. So the GCF is a 5. Now, when we think about the variables, we have x, x, and x. And we have first power, second power, and first power, so that can stay. Then we have y, y, and y. We have second power, first power, and first power, so that can stay. So my GCF is 5xy. So let's write that out in front of a set of parentheses. And again, to get what's inside, you're going to have three terms. So minus, minus. So what goes here? 20xy squared divided by 5xy. 20 divided by 5 is 4. x over x is 1. y squared over y is y. 15x squared y over 5xy. 15 divided by 5 is 3. x squared over x is x. y over y is 1. 100xy divided by 5xy. 100 divided by 5 is 20 x over x is 1, y over y is 1. So we end up with 5xy multiplied by the quantity 4y minus 3x minus 20. All right, let's go ahead and wrap up our lesson by looking at how to factor out a common binomial factor. This is something we're going to use in the next review section where we're talking about factoring by grouping. So let's suppose we look at the problem, the quantity x plus 1 times the quantity x minus 5 plus the quantity x minus 5 times the quantity x minus 6. So I see that I have a common binomial, meaning two-term polynomial, so a common binomial factor. So I can just pull that out, okay? Just like I've been doing in the other problems, I can still just pull this guy out. And what happens when I pull it out? Well, inside of parentheses, I would have what? If I pull out an x minus 5 from here, I would just have the x plus 1. So the x plus 1, and you can put that inside of parentheses if you want for now. And plus, over here, if I pull out an x minus 5, I would have the x minus 6 there. Now, these double parentheses here cause a lot of concern for a lot of students. So if you want to make this easier on yourself, just temporarily put some brackets there. We're going to combine like terms inside of here, so we can get rid of the brackets in a minute. So x plus x is 2x. 1 minus 6 is going to be negative 5. So this would be 2x. 2x minus 5. And now I could write this with some parentheses here. And so you've successfully factored this guy. You've pulled out or factored out a common binomial factor. Now it's easy to prove to yourself that this works. If I go through and foil this, x times 2x is 2x squared. The outer would be minus 5x. The inner would be minus 10x. So you'd have minus 5x and then minus 10x. So you combine like terms there, you'd have negative 15x or minus 15x. And then the last term is negative 5 times negative 5 is plus 25. Now if I go through here, x times x is x squared. The outer would be minus 5x, the inner would be plus 1x, and the last would be minus 5. So this guy right here in the middle would combine to be minus 4x. So I'd have x squared minus 4x minus 5 and plus. Over here I would have x squared my outer would be minus 6x, my inner would be minus 5x, so that would be minus 11x if I combine the two, and then my last would be plus 30. So what does this equal? If I'm right, it should equal this. x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. Negative 4x minus 11x is minus 15x, 
then negative 5 plus 30 would be plus 25. So I want you to notice that we got the same thing here as we got here. So this shows you that we can factor out a common binomial factor. We end up with the same result either way, the 2x squared minus 15x plus 25.